committee will come to order. Good morning. Today the committee will examine the use of Arbitron's portable people meter, a device that Arbitron claims is revolutionizing radio audience ratings, but which instead may be eliminating diversity in radio broadcasting. The last 30 years have been a great American entrepreneurial story for minority-owned radio stations and minority radio listeners, where once there were few or no minority radio stations in most cities. Now there are multiple stations competing in all major metropolitan areas. The existence of this hard-won legacy is now threatened. Arbitron's controversial use of PPM is driving away advertisers. Minority radio has been hit by a perfect storm, the economic downturn and PPM. Most people have probably never even heard of the PPM. The PPM is a device that looks like a beeper. It is designed to detect and electronically record the radio stations a person, a radio station a person listens to. Arbitron is using the PPM to replace the paper diaries that have been used for decades to find out which listens to which station, who listens to which station. In 2006, Arbitron introduced the PPM in several cities, including New York and Philadelphia. The results were swift. The ratings of minority-owned or minority-targeted radio stations plummeted by as much as 70 percent. Since then, Arbitron has expanded the use of its PPM across the country in 31 additional markets, which has resulted in crippling minority-owned or targeted radio stations. These ratings have had a devastating effect on the radio industry. Advertising, profit, and programming choices are all shifting away from the minority communities. I have no quarrel with a rating system that is accurate, but there is serious question as to whether the way Arbitron uses PPM produces truly accurate results. I note that I am not alone in the concern the Media Rating Council, MRC, is the industry's self-regulatory body where the council finds that a measurement service consistently provides fair, accurate, and unbiased data. It awards accreditation. Where this is not the case, it denies accreditation. The MRC has reviewed Arbitron's use of the PPM and has certified its use in only two markets, Riverside, California, and Houston, Texas. The MRC has withheld accreditation to Arbitron in 31 of the 33 PPM markets. In addition, the Attorney General in New York and New Jersey, Maryland and Florida, have all taken actions against Arbitron, alleging flaws in PPM's methodology that have resulted in the undercounting of minority listeners, precipitous drops in ratings, and loss of advertising revenues. Yet Arbitron has not changed and insists on commercialization before it receives proper accreditation. Some people may ask how a problem like this could even exist in this day and age. Well, as the famous expression goes, when the cat's away, the mice will play. In this case, the cat hasn't been seen in years. For many years, our government has taken a hands-off approach to oversight or regulation of the radio rating in this industry. The result is that Arbitron, a mon monopolistic company, is not regulated by anyone. Arbitron argues that the FCC does not have jurisdiction over it, and Arbitron is free to ignore MRC, the so-called industry regulator because MRC is a purely voluntary organization with a voluntary code of conduct and voluntary participation, and we do not have to pay any attention to them as well. Can we afford to make the health of minority radio, <coughs> excuse me, can we afford to make the health of minority radio broadcasting depend on voluntary good behavior on the part of a monopolistic um, company? This is not the first time Congress has considered this question. Back in the 1960s, the House 
Interstate and Foreign Commerce Committee considered regulating radio and television audience rating companies. Back then, Congress opted to let the industry regulate itself based on assurance that it would be done in a rational way. In fact, the industry created MRC to carry out that, <coughs> that self-regulation. Apparently, this self-regulatory system more or less worked for a number of years. Now, I'm not sure. Perhaps we need to take another look at that basic issue. Today, we will have the opportunity to hear from Michael Skarskinski, the CEO of uh, Arbitron, and of course, uh, who can hopefully shed light on some of these questions. Additionally, we will hear from other members of the radio industry who have been directly affected by the PPM. I look forward to hearing their testimonies uh, and discussing uh, potential solutions to this problem. And at this time, I would like to yield time to the ranking member of the committee, gentleman from California, uh, Congressman Darrell Issa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And as this committee is well aware, as a result of our oversight of the census, we expect and will get a more accurate count, data that is more reliable. Oddly enough, new technology for the census was at the core of our, dis of, of our hearings and our recognition that the new technology was not ready for prime time. Today's hearing, similarly, is on whether the accuracy, the total accuracy of PPM is, in fact, to be uh, acknowledged or if, in fact, more work is to be done. It seems clear that the pr prior to the introduction of PPM, radio rating measurements were, uh, measurement was stuck in the words of one columnist in the Stone Age. With the use of weekly handwritten paper diaries, the issues, <coughs> the issues related to the use of these diaries in fair, simple, easy to grasp terms was questionable. Attempting to restructure that system, if you will, to make a Frank Franklin Day Planner of, of diaries had been tried many times, but ultimately it was only as good as a reporting person and often questions about brand loyalty or, uh, being more important when somebody was recapturing what they had done over a week rather than the count of what, how many minutes they spent on a specific station. Notwithstanding that, being one of the two members, or excuse me, my district including one of the two locations in which we have been approved, Riverside, Cal California, I'm acutely aware that we want to not only get it right, but we want to recognize the real value in a media market of the listeners. I'm pleased today to see both the uh, uh, president and CEO of the rating agency and our witness, Alfred C. Liggins, chief executive officer and president of Radio One, a person who, in fact, has found it to be a useful tool. Mr. Chairman, I'm not going to go through my entire opening statement. Uh, I'd ask that it be placed in the record and would just close. Without objection. And just close saying that although today the numbers are what we're talking about, from my own background of purchasing advertising, I can tell you that the black entertainment television, when I was advertising on cable, outperformed in the actual benefit to our company, its rating, and was one of the most cost-effective places to advertise my brands. Knowing this, I recognize that even with a rating, it doesn't state what the value is to the advertiser. So in, my, in closing, Mr. Chairman, it is clear that we have to both look at accurate numbers, and over time, the rating agencies must, I repeat, must modernize to look at intensity of the listener, intensity of the watcher in the case of television, and weight that. Today there is no such thing as a system that properly understands that you may have less or more listeners, they may listen for less or more time, but they may be much more loyal to the brands that are advertised on those stations. That technology does not exist. We will not hear as far as I know about it today, but Mr. Chairman, I appreciate that you are teeing up a matter that has been for too long not he heard in the Energy and Commerce Committee or in this committee or even next door in Judiciary Committee. And I commend you on holding this hearing and yield back the balance of my time. Thank you very much. I appreciate your testimony and, and also your kind words. Uh, we will now um, move to our first panel. 
and if it's, it's a long-standing policy that we swear in all of our witnesses. So if you would stand and raise your right hand. You agree to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. If you do, answer in the affirmative. Let the record reflect that. You may be seated. Let me um, just run down uh, Mr. Michael Skarzynski uh, is president and CEO of Arbitron. Prior to joining Arbitron, Mr. Skarzynski served as president and CEO at a number of technology companies, including, uh, uh, I think it's a performance technology, and of course he's also uh, with Zebo and uh, Predictive Networks, and of course he focused on business and product development. Mr. Skarzynski also held management positions at Lucent and of course uh, under the administration of George H. Bush. Skarzynski served as the Secretary of Trade Development at the Department of Commerce. Uh, Mr. George, George Ivey has been the Executive Director and CEO of the Media Rating Council um, since 2000. The Media Rating Council is not for profit organization which was created at the request of Congress 44 years ago to ensure high ethical and operational standards for rating companies. Mr. Ivey's background includes 25 years of experience in media research, auditing, oversight, and consulting. Prior to joining the MRC, Mr. Ivey was a partner at Ernest and & Young and there and their lead representative and advisor to the MRC. Mr. C Cyril Chagrin is the Executive Vice President of the Corporate Research Division at Univision Communications, Inc., where she oversees research for all media divisions. Mrs. Chagrin is considered an expert in the field of audience measurement and is renowned for her research on sampling methodology. Prior to joining Univision, Mrs. Chagrin was the Senior Vice President of Marketing Development at Nielsen's Media Research. During her 27 years at Nielsen, she developed new systems of data collection. She also was the principal developer of Nielsen's Hispanic service, which she managed for 10 years. Welcome. Mr. David Honing is the co-founder and current president and executive director of the Minority Media and Telecommunication Council. He also serves as general counsel to the Broadband Opportunity Coalition. The MMTC represents over 70 minority civil rights and religious national organizations in selected proceedings before the FCC and other agencies. Mr. Horning uh, has practiced communications and civil rights law since 1983, specializing in electronic redlining and race discrimination cases. Uh, why don't we just uh, um, start with you, Mr. Skarzynski, and, um, and of course, uh, give us your statement. You have five minutes, and the way it works here is that when you start out, uh, the light is on green. And then just a minute before you're, you're in, it turns to yellow. And then a minute later, it turns to red. And red throughout the United States of America means stop. So Mr. Skarzynski, please. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Issa, and members of the committee. I am Michael Skarzynski, Chief Executive Officer of Arbitron. On behalf of Arbitron's 1,300 employees who work in 27 states, I'm proud to appear before this committee today. For more than 60 years, Arbitron has been dedicated to advancing the interests of the radio industry. We provide the quality data that allows radio broadcasters to make programming decisions and advertisers to make their media buying decisions. Today's hearing is focused on Arbitron's Portable People Meter, or PPM, and its impact on minority radio stations. We share the concern regarding the health of this important voice of the broadcasting community. 
We are, however, confident that PPM is not the cause of the challenges faced by minority broadcasters. It is encouraging to note that urban adult contemporary is the most listened to format in the top 16 PPM markets. This was reported just two days ago by an important trade publication, Inside Radio. We believe that the Inside Radio report is another strong indication that PPM continues to reflect reliably the listenership of all formats, including urban and Hispanic. Arbitron has worked to implement the PPM service responsibly and fairly, and we have always been sensitive and responsive to customer concerns raised about PPM. Arbitron launched its innovative rating service to support the higher radio industry's objective to have relevant, reliable data that enables it to compete against television, internet, and other media for advertising revenue. While PPM represents a significant advance, it cannot do everything. It cannot solve the severe economic challenges that the radio industry has confronted for the last two years. We have all felt the impact of a recession that has caused a drastic and in some cases devastating decline in radio advertising with resulting significant declines in radio revenue. Further, PPM cannot address the high debt burdens faced by many radio broadcasters, including minority broadcasters. Our radio broadcast customers asked Arbitron to develop an electronic measurement service that helps them showcase the value of radio. Our advertising agency customers asked us to provide them with a service that more accurately reflects exposure to radio. We responded. The development of PPM is a reflection of our commitment to improving radio. Arbitron spent more than $100 million over 10 years developing this solution. We incorporated input from industry players and the technology has been thoroughly tested over time. The PPM technology and methodology are solid. PPM was honored by Time Magazine as one of the best inventions of 2007. PPM methodology was built on the MRC accredited diary methodology and produces valid and reliable audience estimates. In fact, PPM has been the audience measurement tool of choice for several years in a number of European countries as well as Canada and Singapore. Overall, we have received a great deal of positive customer feedback about PPM. Broadcasters are telling Arbitron that PPM provides reliable, timely, and granular data. Providing our broadcast customers the more timely PPM data <clears throat> has helped guide mid-course corrections and programming adjustments to advance their business. For example, California radio station KJLH, owned by Stevie Wonder, added the Steve Harvey Show on August 10th, 2009. Current PPM data shows that KJLH between September and October 2009 experienced a 60% increase in morning drive share for persons 18 to 34. When I joined Arbitron in January of this year, I made it my priority to visit customers personally. I learned from customers that there are powerful and constructive ideas about how we can improve our PPM service. In fact, listening to our customers has helped us craft our continuous improvement program as we strive to improve our PPM service and make it a valuable asset for the industry. Every technology requires improvements and we believe we have been both proactive and responsive to making improvements. This year, we have expanded cell phone only sampling to a national average of 15% and we expect to increase to 20% by year end 2010. We've instituted country of origin reporting We've expanded extensive training, in-person coaching, and enhanced incentives to encourage greater survey participation. Additionally, we are working with our customers and other in industry leaders to develop an engagement index. As envisioned, the engagement index would be a metric that complements existing data and reflects an audience involvement and loyalty to a particular station. This cooperative work could help all broadcasters, advertising agencies, and advertisers have a balanced impact on radio ad planning and buying. We have been working tirelessly with members of the minority broadcasting community, and we believe that with your leadership and a continued dialogue, we can make progress towards a common ground. Mr. Chairman, Arbitron welcomes the opportunity to work with you and members of the committee to address the challenges of the minority radio broadcasters. I look forward to your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Ivey. Sure, thank you. Uh, Chairman Towns, Ranking Member Issa, 
and members of the committee, my name is. Joel. Are your mic on? It's on. Yeah, maybe pull it just pull a closer here. to you. Yeah. Can you? Is that better? Okay. Uh, Chairman Towns, uh, Ranking Member Isa, and members of the committee, my name is George Ivey. And for the last 10 years, I've served as the Executive Director and CEO of the Media Rating Council. I would like to thank Chairman Towns, Ranking Member Isa, and the committee for the opportunity to testify this morning on Arbitron's portable people meter rating service. Before joining the MRC, I worked with Ernst & Young as lead partner on all MRC audits. Including my 10 years as executive director, I have, over, I have over 25 years experience in auditing rating service methodologies, and I've presided over and conducted many hundreds of these audits. 45 years ago, Congress addressed the same issue this committee faces today, namely the accuracy and reliability of audience research. At that time, after extensive testimony and careful consideration, Congress reached three basic conclusions. First, there was a need for professional independent review of audience rating services. Second, that industry self-regulation rather than the hand of direct government regulation was the best means of assuring quality and accuracy of audience rating data. And third, through federal laws regulating anti-competitive anti conduct and deceptive practices, the federal government retained the means to deal with serious computer consumer impacting abuses. The MRC ultimately emerged based on the suggestions received during these congressional deliberations. Just as Congress envisioned, our only business is to review and accredit audience rating services through rigorous, independent, and objective audits. One of the hallmarks of our auditing procedures is that participating research organizations must be totally transparent to us, driving our confidentiality requirements, which were originally recommended by Congress. We are independent of the rating services we review. The only funds we accept from rating services are the payments for their CPA audits, which are passed through in full to the CPA firms we engage. As described in my written testimony, the MRC has adopted stringent safeguards to assure that accreditation decisions are based only on the merits. We appreciate the committee's interest in the merits of the PPM services and of particular importance, its concern that PPM services may fail to accurately represent the listening preferences of minority audiences. Through cooperation with the committee, subpoena, we have made audits and our related correspondence available for your review. We hope our diligence, expertise, and due process is apparent from this documentation. From the standpoint of the MRC's role and mission and what we are qualified to observe, I see two distinct issues. First, whether the PPM technology itself is an improvement in terms of measurement accuracy. Second, how this technology is being implemented by Arbitron in the markets of interest. Let me quickly address the first issue. There is little doubt, and in fact there exists a broad industry consensus, that electronic measurements such as Arbitron's PPM technology can represent an improvement over existing non-electronic audience measurement when implemented diligently. In the second area, the implementation details, the MRC has ongoing concerns. Perhaps most important, in our opinion, Arbitron has failed to demonstrate that the PPM services can attain sufficient performance metrics among certain mostly younger panelists across most markets on a sustained basis. And the company continues to introduce numerous new PPM markets without having solved this issue. We have ongoing concerns and dialogue surrounding several measurement issues. Despite efforts to improve and extensive cooperation from Arbitron with the MRC, these issues remain a concern today. Attached to our written testimony, reference attachment F, is a series of key performance indicator charts that illustrate a decline in tabulation rates among young adult panelists during the period from January 2009 to September 2009. This was considered by our committee 
in the last audit review meeting of the PPM services. In almost all cases, young adult African American panelists show even worse performance than these general charts indicate. These charts also show response rates, referred to as SPI, for the markets, some of which are low by the committee. Arbitron is in the process of adding significant staff and implementing other improvements intended to stem the tabulation rights declines. In attachment G of our written testimony, you can see the results of that for a short period in October. Arbitron has been participating in the accreditation process fully. However, the fact remains that Arbitron's R&D process for the improvements required by the MRC have been ongoing post-commercialization for over 20 unaccredited markets. We have several recommendations on record with Arbitron to address these matters. In closing, the MRC has strived for four decades to be faithful to the mission Congress suggested for us. We hope the committee agrees that Arbitron should remain committed to the MRC process, maintain focus on the audit and methodological issues we raise, and ultimately focus on gaining the marketplace assurance of MRC accreditation of its PPM services as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Chagrin? Thank you. Chairman Towns, Ranking Member Issa, and members of the committee, my name is Cyril Chagrin, and I'm Executive Vice President, Corporate Research at Univision Communications, which owns and operates 68 local Spanish language radio stations across the country. The focus of my testimony today is the serious flaws in Arbitron's personal people meter radio ratings measurement system and the adverse effects of those flaws on minority broadcasters and listeners. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today. I've worked in the media ratings industry for over 30 years. Thank you. I am here today because I'm concerned that the radio rating system is facing a crisis that threatens to undermine the gold radio marketplace. In 2007, Arbitron began rolling out its currency, its PPM system and methodology. From the outset, Arbitron promoted the PPM system as a technological advance from the older paper diary system, a 21st century ratings technology, maybe 21st century, the underlying research methodologies upon which the system is based is still very much stuck in the 20th century, are badly flawed, and are creating havoc in the radio marketplace. From the outset, the data provided under the PPM system 